Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him out. Chris Taylor. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads Live, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Scott Gearman. Scott, a little early morning Monday trade for the Dodgers, a stunner. Caleb Ferguson sent to the Yankees, and then Ryan Brazier re-signed. We are going to get to both of those, but just on the surface, Scott, this trade of Caleb Ferguson came out of nowhere. Yeah, certainly did. I just one of those back end deals where everything's just started to get ramping up. You feel like Dodgers are set with their lefties in their bullpen and they go ahead and trade Caleb Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it did feel like the bullpen was the piece that was secure. And, and to your point, like a Yancy Almonte who got traded earlier, Victor Gonzalez, those were guys that felt like they could be moved. They were not a surprise, but especially as we'll get into with 40 man roster spots opening up when the 60 day IL becomes a thing on Friday it felt like there wasn't necessarily a need to make a move. We'll get into the 40-man ramifications of this as well. And again, we're going to get to Ryan Brazier as well. So thank you to everybody joining us live on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course here on YouTube as well. But let's talk this Caleb Ferguson trade first, Scott. He goes to the Yankees, the second trade the Dodgers have made with the Yankees this offseason in exchange for relief pitcher Matt Gage and starting pitcher Christian Zazueta. Gage is a 31, about to be 31. Early, happy early birthday, Matt Gage. Turns 31 next week. He's a lefty. He is a 40-man roster guy. So originally it was like, oh, well, they needed to move Ferguson to open up a 40-man roster spot. They didn't do that because Gage is on the 40-man roster but does have an option year. Zazueta is a 19-year-old who made 12 starts in the Dominican Summer League last year. So I'll give you the first chance to take this wherever you want to, Scott. Do you want to start with Ferguson or do you want to start with the guys coming back? Let's start with Ferguson. Okay. Give me your take. Give me your take because it seems like you were – maybe the low man in Dodgers land on Caleb Ferguson based on some of the texts and tweets I've seen this morning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Caleb Ferguson, Caleb Ferguson experience was one that was, you know, up and down. Like he, I don't know how consistent he was. Like that's it, if anybody thought he was consistent for the fact that, you know, it was a roller coaster of, is he, he's going to blow somebody by with a fastball or is he going to walk? Like he never looked, he wasn't a comfortable at bat. Like, like in terms of watching, like it didn't seem like he had a handle. He was kind of in between starting, relieving, opening, relieving. Uh, I didn't look at him like a dominant lefty. I okay. That's just from what I've seen, like just eye test guy. And that's just how it is. I mean, second half of the year, 4.18, 171 whip. That's what stands out to me the most. Huge walk guy. And that's just something the Dodgers have emphasized a ton. Limit the walks. Like if you're walking guys, you're you're not doing your job. And that's flat out how they see it. Messia, yeah. uh, second half of the year or after he gets called back up from AAA was terrific. Like he was the number one. I know we I saw Blake on Twitter saying that Ferguson was probably their best lefty. I can't disagree with that more. Like mm. Bessie is for me, it's like Ferguson here. Bessie is way up here with how they finished the year. So by letting Ferguson go, uh, I don't like Dodgers have shown that they don't particularly care too much about handedness. they just want to get as many guys who can get outs. And that this, that leads us into the conversation with, who they signed following this deal. So we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll save that. Yeah. The Ferguson piece is interesting because it's kind of, to your point, Vessia was atrocious to begin the year to the point that he was actually sent down yeah. and then finishes strong. Ferguson, the exact opposite has a good start to the year and finishes slowly. Uh, Ferguson actually ends up with better numbers than Vessia across the board. So to your point, it's kind of like, I, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Like, what do you want to believe? Do you want to just, if we're looking at the last three months, I think the point you're making is a good one. And I, I'm, I've been sort of, I've stayed on my, my Vessia stock. I like Alex Vessia. I think he's very good. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I would probably lean with Blake and say, I like Ferguson better, but I, I think the interesting thing about Ferguson, I always try and when these trades happen, talk myself like what's the optimistic view of why this is a good trade and what's the pessimistic view of why it's a bad trade. So the good part is this um, Caleb Ferguson just had like his first healthy season in a long mm. time. Um, he threw 34 innings in 2022. He threw zero in 2021, 18 in 2020. I don't believe had had more than 50 in any season. So from a health perspective, the Dodgers move him with one year left on his contract, no option years remaining. They move him right when like coming off of his most healthy season, his strikeout rate was down um, from, you know, the last couple of years, his walk rate was up, which you referred to. And so I, I think 
those that that's the hey, maybe it's a good time to move off of Caleb Ferguson. The downside to me is just, and, and this gets into the return. I liked Caleb Ferguson, and I'm with you. Like from the Dodgers' perspective, because of the three batter rule, having defined lefties maybe isn't that big of a deal, and yet it still feels like you need some. And Ryan Yarbrough, I don't really think of as a relief pitcher. And so now it's just Vesia and I guess Matt Gage, who we're going to talk about here. But talk to me a little bit more about why you're saying, like, do you agree with the Dodgers? It's not, uh, do you agree with the Dodgers that having lefties is not necessarily something that needs to be focused on in the bullpen? Yeah. I mean, the, I think we, we've been, I've been teasing Brazier for a minute like can I, we get into that like that that signing Let's right there because i want to finish the the back yeah, half of this trade for sure. but, but okay they, yeah yeah so ferguson ferguson splits last year were you know he had fine strikeout numbers versus lefties almost 12 per nine that's awesome like yeah. he can get like he can strike them out but he didn't show an ability to dominate like vesia came in like i'm pulling up pulling it up right now i did the highlight or the uh the recap on vesia like it just shows what a left-handed specialist is supposed to do. Yeah. Like Alex Vesia, after he got called back up, he, let's see. Yep. He had, you know, 102 whip. Like he's limiting guys, sub you know, 200 batting average over his final 39 and a third. So Vesia has been in big spots. Uh, and honestly, he, sh he, he put a, a, he only allowed a 215 batting average, 2.55 ERA, and a sub one whip against lefties. Okay. That's a left handed specialist. So, by allowing Vesia to be that guy, this opens up them also for variability at the trade deadline, which they haven't had in years past because they've had two guys where it's like, if you add one more, is he really going to get those appearances? Caleb Ferguson didn't have sp like, like major splits. So, in, he wasn't particularly good versus both. Yeah. He's allowing, I think, like almost a 270 batting average from like on there. His whip was just astronomical. It's just I keep focusing right back to that. Every time I pulled up Caleb Ferguson's numbers, it was, you know, he's allowing too much, too many base runners. He's allowing too much contact. He just he wedges himself into spots where he gets behind in counts and then he has to force feed fastballs. And I yeah. just I didn't yeah. think he was particularly good when the moment called for it. I really didn't. Like if he got a big strikeout in a spot in that he put himself in, then people wash that away. Not for me. Like that's, he's just, he was an uneasy watch. And yeah. that's, that's when, it, when it's a guy, when you have one job to go out there and get maybe two lefties out of three hitters and you walk one and then you, you know, you pigeonhole yourself there with a guy on first right handed up or lefty up. And then you have to struggle on that. Like it's yeah. just a tough thing. So I don't, I didn't have as much faith ever in Caleb Ferguson early on in his career with the Dodgers. Fine. Like it was, you know, we, it was the unknown, but We've seen who he is. He didn't separate himself there. And Vesia going down to AAA, reinventing himself a little bit, just finding himself. That's a big deal. Uh, and yeah. that that kind of you know took him off and 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 put him up in that number one spot of the bullpen for me as a lefty. I think the tough part for me is all all of what you said. I'm not disagreeing. Like I don't. I I, I tweeted. I think Ferguson at worst was a solid lefty. At best was a back end guy. I mean, 3.34 FIP last year, that's a pretty solid number for a relief pitcher. Again, not a guy that you're going to put in your closer, but as a lefty, a guy, you know, where there are high points where he was much better than that and low points, and that's kind of the midpoint, which to, your, to, to what you're saying, the consistency piece with Ferguson is the tricky part. Like, yeah, he lands at 3.34 FIP, but it feels like half of his appearances are like lights out and half of his appearances are a disaster. You look at Savant, 97th percentile in barrel rate last year. Uh, 80th, you know, but that was kind of the only 69th percentile in strikeout rate. The rest of it sort of below average. I think, Scott, as we shift gears here towards what they got in exchange. So Matt Gage and Christian Zazueta Jr., the two pieces coming back. Regardless of what you think about Caleb Ferguson, I don't love this return for him. Here's why. Gage is coming back. Gage is a lefty. He's old. He's four years older than Caleb Ferguson. He's about three and a half years older. He's th about to turn 31. He does have an option here, but he takes up a 40 man spot. So you're not saving a 40 man spot. You're getting another lefty gauge was claimed off of waivers a week ago, Scott. Like this is a guy that was DFA would and available to the league. The Yankees claim him in January and then trade him to the Dodgers. He has 19 and two thirds career innings, just five appearances last year for the Astros. Um, kind of a cool story. 2019, he's pitching in Mexico. He's out of affiliated ball. 2020, COVID happens. He doesn't get an invite. 2021, he comes back. 
adds a cutter, makes his major league debut at 29. And then Zazueta, who's a total wild card, 19 year old Dominican summer league. But when I look at the return, Scott, that's the like, regardless of how down you might be on Caleb Ferguson, like, can you possibly be happy about what they got back for him? I don't, I honestly, I mean, I think it's just for the prospect. I think Saz, you know, Zazueta and Gage is just a, I don't, I, he's a dart throw. I don't think, yeah. I don't know if he either, either makes the team or even he might be DFA'd or they could trade him again or, you know, there's need for arms and AAA or not AAA spring training and see if he makes the, makes the team. So yeah. that's what I think it is. You know, he's an older, older player. Like you said, five appearances for the Astros was, was solid. You know, I don't, I, I don't think he makes a team, you know, another lefty. Let's see what he's got. Uh, and that's about it there. I don't, yeah. there, I'm not going to say like, Oh, you know, he's on the team. He's on a 40 man automatically. That's who the comp is going to be. I think it was more for the prospect reset a clock on somebody, get somebody in there. Cause that's, that's ultimately what it is for me. It's re they've, they've done that also this year. Yeah. Uh, they did that with Michael Bush, reset the clock completely, get a, a solid haul there. And you go here and you, you know, get Matt Gage, Zazueta for Caleb Ferguson, who you ultimately, they weren't particularly high on and they feel like maybe it gives them more variability and swapping that in for Ryan Brazier that, that I think that's a plus. I think this is, it's a quite for a lot of people who like having handedness in the bullpen and think that's a like high in their totem pole, then yeah. this move won't make much sense. But if you're going to say the Dodgers are making a disastrous move by giving up a, a very mid lefty reliever, I mean, you know, then you're going to be unhappy. But yeah. if you're looking at it like, you know, glass half full and actually look at what it is, there's a lot to like in this. Just it's yeah. just resetting it and getting a player. Yeah, I, I mean, mid lefty 3.34 FIP. It's hard for me to get there on on calling Caleb Ferguson mid when he's there. I mean, again, I'm not saying he's a like eighth inning setup man, but I think he's, it just feels like he, he should have netted more than a 19 year old with a three and a half ERA in the DSL. Because if, if what you're saying, if Gage isn't even going to make the roster, then I find this even harder to swallow. I mean, cause Scott, they, they are going to open up three 40 man roster spots on Friday. So like, it, and I guess you're kind of, you have to move Ferguson to get Brazier because you need a 26 man roster spot to get there. But that's just the tricky part for me. Um, if in fact Gage doesn't even make the team, like now, if you tell me the Dodgers see something in Gage, they like that he has an option year. They can kind of shuffle him back and forth in a way that they couldn't do to Caleb Ferguson. And mm -hmm. they think he's going to give them, you know, 80 to 85% of the performance that Ferguson was with more flexibility. Then I can kind of get there, but it's just tough for me to see a guy in Ferguson who was sort of written in pen to be a contributor this year. If, if all I'm actually getting out of it is, a 19 year old playing in the DSL and who knows? I mean, I admittedly, I don't know anything about Zazueta jr. Maybe there are people that are kind of like, Hey, this is actually a really intriguing dart throw. I haven't seen that from any prospect people yet on Twitter as we're reporting this, but that would be the one piece that could get me to, to feel a little bit better about this. So we'll see on that, but let's get to, as you pointed out, the second move and the move that I think you and I are both going to agree on, which is Ryan Brazier, a two year deal worth $9 million. Let, Brazier, let's set like the actual person Brazier aside. Holy smoke, Scott. I love this contract. If you would have told me that Brazier was coming back two years, 9 million incentives that could push it to 13. I thought we were starting at two years, 13. The fact that it yeah, starts man. at two and nine is a home run of a deal. Yep. Regardless of how I feel about Caleb Ferguson, this is a 10 out of 10 move for Andrew Friedman, Brandon Gomes and the Dodgers. It's just, it's, it's flat out unbelievable that they yeah. were able to net him at this. Like it is like if people look at exactly what Ryan Brazier did, he should have been top, one of the top arms on the market. The yeah. dude, once he got in the Dodgers, you know, prior lab added the cutter, unbelievable stuff. Like, yeah, everyone should take a look. You know, we did a little piece, not too much, not too big, but enough to actually show you some stuff, like show you some numbers and some data that pulled up. Once Ryan Brazier got with the Dodgers, they added a cutter. He became unhittable, man. Like yeah. his splits versus lefties, like he, he 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 found that ability again when he was with the Red Sox and he was one of their prominent arms. Ryan Brazier became, you know, 0.7 ERA, 0.72 WHIP, only yeah. allowed a 130 batting average, 38 and two thirds, massive sample. Yeah. So against lefties, he allowed a 123 batting average. Every batting average guy. I want Matt on here just to be nodding his head <laughs> like this. Yes. So yeah. he allowed one homer. In 17 innings pitch versus lefties, guys. 
Like this, this deal for Ryan Brazier, this isn't just a seventh inning guy. This is a Ryan Brazier has the ability to anchor a bullpen, man. Like he's, you've got another Evan Phillips who can come in and be a fireman. And Ryan Brazier did that multiple times last year. So this is a home run. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm juiced about this. Like, does the strikeout rate scare you with Brazier? I mean, striking out less than a guy in inning. That's kind of the one number that worries me. Obviously, some people will point to his age. He's 36 and a half years old as well. But, the num the money is I mean for the money I don't care but the strikeout num the strikeout rate is the one concerning thing I mean you mentioned it's the point seven o ERA it's the two point four eight FIP I mean all that is good it's the strikeout rate if anything was going to concern me Scott it's that um can you like how do you how do you na navigate that one he's missing barrels big yeah. time yeah. you know he's he's bruised our Gratterall missing barrels type like. Ruzdar is exceptional at that. That's why he doesn't strike guys out, uh, and he has immense success. So even when Brazier was with the Red Sox, like Savant, like accumulation of all you know the stuff Brazier did, and even with his numbers when he was terrible yeah. with the Red Sox, one thing he did is he's able to miss barrels. But when he's with the Dodgers, that number you know not only regulated it, you know he found himself in the 95th percentile. So he's allowing just you know three three point eight percent barrel. So it's He's an unbelievable. He's exceptional yeah. at it. So as long as he's able to do that, you know, find that cutter against lefties, he's got an ability to, to make that happen. He doesn't have to, if he's not striking guys out, he's missing bats. Yeah. Like in terms of like missing the barrel. So he's not giving up that big contact, man. And yeah. that's fine by me. I mean, you need those reliever types. You need someone who's going to go out there and not necessarily look for that, you know, that strikeout, that long at bat to, to get that punch. Uh, I'm, you can't talk to me and there's no, no, nothing that anybody could say that would like to point me in the direction of not loving this signing from yeah. every, every way. Well, and I think you just made the interesting point, which is the reason that you would want to have to tie this all together. The reason that most people would say, Hey, we want to have lefty relievers is because it's baked into the belief that a lefty reliever is going to dominate a lefty hitter in a way that is unique in baseball matchups. And therefore you want to make sure you've got somebody out there that can go get a lefty out in a big spot and make them uncomfortable. To the mm -hmm. point that you're making, it sounds like what you're saying is, yes, Caleb Ferguson is a left-handed pitcher, but if a lefty is coming up in a big spot to hit against the Dodgers, you would actually prefer Ryan Brazier, a righty, over Caleb Ferguson, a lefty. Is that fair? Yes. Because that cutter and because of just looking at the performance against, right? And, and it goes back yeah. to, I think, a bigger picture thing is, oh, well, they need lefty relievers is actually sort of a two steps down the road from they need to get left-handed hitters out. They need guys in the bullpen that can get left-handed hitters out. And I think the point that you're making is a fair one. When you dig into Brazier's numbers is I don't care what hand the guy pitches with. Nope. If he's better at getting lefties out than the lefty, then that accomplishes the purpose. I actually want, I don't need lefties just for the sake of having lefties. I need guys to get lefties out. And if Brazier's cutter is that thing, then all full speed ahead. Spot on. Yeah, no, you're, you're talking the lane. That's exactly my thing. So, Caleb Ferguson, his sure, he's if you look at his left-handed stuff, he's he's fine. Like he's fine. But he was so bad against righties. Yeah. So bad. Like he would he would not want to put a pitch in a spot to hit. And that's where he'd find himself in such walk trouble. Like his splits were so this, man. Like he's allowing 4.2 walk nine against righties. So he would just get himself into a spot where if he allows a lefty to get on base, like if that that matchup does not work. And then yeah. he has to go face a righty. You're cooked. Like you're in a really difficult spot. So that's that's where it's at. And Vessia was better in that sense. So the Dodgers, where they're at, they feel he was expendable, and they can find a return. Um, yeah, man. I mean, what's interesting about Ferguson is Ferguson actually had reverse splits for most of his career. Um, you know, you're pointing out how much he struggled against righties. If you go back 2022, they hit 160 against him. 2020, they hit 190 against him in those. But then last year, that number against righties jumps all the way up to 270 against lefties. On the other hand, 2020, they hit 280 against him. 2022, they hit 240 against him. And 2023, they hit 266. So again, mm -hmm. I still don't like the return that you're getting for Caleb Ferguson, but I think as we talk this through, Scott, the thing that that I think you're onto, which is a great point, again, is rather than get caught up on how many lefties the Dodgers have in the bullpen, ask yourself how many guys do the Dodgers have in the bullpen that can get a left-handed hitter out? Because that would be the primary reason you would want left-handed pitchers is the assumption that a lefty is going to get lefties out at a better rate. 
in some yep. guys' situations, because of their stuff, because of their delivery, because of their repertoire, that's not going to be the case. Again, Caleb Ferguson, for most of his career, was better, was dominant against righties and actually struggled against lefties. Last year, it flipped a little bit, but he just struggled. You know, he he was a little bit, um, he wasn't doing either, basically. And, and again, I'm higher on Caleb Ferguson than you. I still think he's a useful piece in the bullpen. I still would have loved to have him. I don't love the fact that we're getting a 31 year old guy who has like, you know, 19 career innings and a, and a 19 year old in the DSL. But if we're talking about the Dodgers in 2023, the idea that the Dodgers now have a guy that you feel better about getting left-handed hitters out and in Brazier, the cost being four and a half million bucks, you know, goes up to 13 million, six and a half million with incentives. Potentially that's a, that's a home run move. Um, as far as I'm concerned, let's get to a couple questions here. Um, Dodger blue, our guy, Matt in the chat asks, does re-signing Ryan Brazier mean no Kenley Jansen trade from your position, Scott, it feels like if they, if they believed they needed to get Caleb Ferguson off of the roster in order to put Ryan Brazier on it, it feels like there isn't any room for more bullpen moves. Is that how you're reading the situation for, for an arm for a guy and, you know, somebody as prominent as like Kenley Jansen, uh, I don't think there's any room. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's there. If they want to make another move down the line at the deadline, and somebody's you know gets hurt or whichever, sure. But I don't know if there's another spot for another righty. Yeah. Maybe a lefty if they if we stray back to that line where handedness matters, then sure. But I think they're in a. We were at Fan Fest. I was there, and we a lot of the questions asked of reporters to players were, "How do you feel about the bullpen?" And a lot of them said this is they feel it's one of their strongest pieces. Yeah. Like Trinan said that everybody said that. So the players believe it. And that was great to hear. And this is just for I know for me, this is another massive plus. You're getting Brazier back in there. Uh, Ferguson aside, we'll we'll get that out of here. Like, oh, yeah. we know where I stand on him. I'm not going to crap on the guy like he was solid in spots. And that's just what it is. I just don't feel he's an exceptional lefty specialist. Yeah. Where yeah. they're and, at. And again, I think. That, yeah. I well, think I, I think I think they're in a terrific spot now. Like yeah. this is yeah. they just they just took a massive leap. They added a huge huge piece. Yeah, TQT asks, did the Dodgers need to trade Ferguson to re-sign Brazier? Seems like the Ferguson deal didn't need to be made at all. Well, this is the tricky part when you have guys who have no option here. So Ferguson yeah. had no option years, couldn't be sent down to the minor leagues. Gage has that going for him, which is why I think he probably sticks around because he can be the quad A guy that bounces up and down and DFA'd as needed. Um, but yep. the, the tricky part is 40 man roster spots matter significantly, but you also have to look at 26 man roster spots. So you look at the Dodgers bullpen again, we think they're going to go with the six man rotation. Okay. So that only leaves you seven relief pitcher spots in there. And when I say a six man rotation, the sixth man might be Yarbrough. It might be Grove. It might be a guy that kind of can, can both relieve and start when needed. But let's say yeah. you have seven strictly relievers. Like, let me just look through the 40 man roster and you tell me who's being left off. So JP fire and I think is a guy who's probably ex your guy. I know I'm talking to, I'm preaching to the choir there. Fire Eisen, You've got Gratterall. You've got Joe Kelly. Um, let's see. You've got Evan Phillips. You've got Blake Trinan. You've got uh, Alex Vesia. You've got Ryan Yarbrough. Now you've got Brazier. So, I mean, like you just, you're probably talking seven to eight guys that are already in the mix for that. Not to mention Michael Grove, not to mention Kyle Hurt, who they're yep. probably going to leave as a starting pitcher. Uh, Ricky Venasco, who's on the 40 man roster. Like they just have these dudes that they've got to figure out something. So I, I, I reading the tea leaves and the way that these two moves were sequenced, Scott tells me that the Dodgers did not think they had room to add Brazier without taking somebody off the 26 man. Is that how you read this? Absolutely. Let me ask you now, does Ferguson make that mix? If you pluck your six or seven best guys from the group, you just said, does Ferguson make that mix? I think he does. Um, let me Over look. Who? I'm trying to figure out if, if um, you know, I think the you, option. Did you, did so you bring up Trinan? Vessia has an option year left. So I think from just a flexibility perspective. Um, I meant postseason. What's that? Postseason. Postseason roster. Ferguson's a guy who gets left off. And for yeah. me, I think like if, if we, if we had a minute to chat, if I was like, yeah. Jeff, we got to chat about this, dude. We got to, we got to. Yeah. We got to understand that Ferguson's a two pitch guy. He's volatile. He walks guys in the postseason. Like, yeah. he, you know, he's. Here's what it. I liked about Ferguson. It, yeah. The inconsistency, I think, in some ways works for and against him. Okay. Because when Ferguson is rolling, sure. There were moments like within the last few years when we would look at a guy like Caleb Ferguson and say, is he actually the best relief pitcher the Dodgers have? 
Because he would have these 20 inning stretches where he was just utterly dominant, striking guys out, missing barrels, lefties, righties didn't matter. Now, he had way too many of the opposite, again, which is why his numbers ended up kind of in the average to above average range, I think. Um, but but I think like in some ways, Ferguson was a good guy to have around if you're the Dodgers. Um, like it, it's kind of like the Joe Kelly experience. Like you almost want the guy that when he's on, it's elite. And when he's off, you just leave him off the roster because like, well, okay, if we're getting 4.8 ERA, Caleb Ferguson, if we're getting five walks per nine, Joe Kelly, then like, we'll just find somebody else. But when, when somebody is on, he's on. So um, that, that's just kind of, you know, that, that's my mentality. Do I think he would be in the seven, the eight man, nine man, let's say nine man bullpen. Cause in the postseason, obviously you can go to nine relievers, four starters. Um, I, I think he's in the mix. I think he's in the mix for sure. I don't think he's going to be like the worst guy in that group. And if you have to leave him out, you have to leave him out. So I, again, my take on Ferguson is I just don't like the return. Like I like okay. Ferguson enough to where if you send him out, give me something to show for it. Give me something that I can like hang my hat on and say, ah, oh, well they got this guy, you know, he's in double a and he was the Yankees 12th best prospect or something, you know, like, Oh, this guy's intriguing. Not like a 19 year old with 12 starts in the DSL. That's, that's consistently. That that's the part to me that I think is is most confusing. Okay, clearly sure. you're out. Though. I mean, I I don't think Ferguson was valuable enough to acquire like to to garner that much in return. I think that getting reliever with you know what you said he had one more year of control after this. Who's that? Ferguson. So he's Ferguson, just this, this year. Is this is the year. next. This is this his is last, last year. year. So you're getting a guy that is has made a handful of starts in the DSL. You're getting a dart throw who has an entire career ahead of him. And, and Ferguson, we already know who he is. Yeah. That's the way the Dodgers organization will see it. So for a friend, like, I'm not going to say that's your enemy. You're going to get mad at that one. I'm not going to say fringe lefty. For a, for a, okay, for a fringe left-handed specialist. And then everybody can go dive in to see if it, that, uh, that, that statement. I don't think up. he's a specialist. I agree with you on that. I don't think yeah. he's, he's a, tradi he's not a traditional lefty like that. Okay, so for a non for an untraditional left-handed reliever in the Dodgers bullpen that's right now loaded, uh, you're getting a guy who has an absurd amount of team like a he has a career of team control. We'll say, we'll just say we have he has a ridiculous amount of team control left. Yeah, and 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 Zazueta, and you have no idea what he's going to be. And this is what they do for one guy, Caleb Ferguson, who is on his last year of his deal and is a possibility of potentially being left off a postseason roster later on. So it's yeah, like that's I mean, how the organization will see it. Like he Ferguson was fine, but yeah. it's not something like the, the return on that. The organization is going to be like, we did okay. Yeah. I just think if you're trying to win, like the Dodgers are, then a guy like Ferguson, I think, you know, even if you view him as your sixth or seventh best reliever, knowing the inconsistency of relief pitchers and knowing kind of the, the amount of injuries that you're going to have to weather at some point, I, I think there's that kind of a thing. And, you know, and as somebody's pointing out in the chat, he's 27 years old. He's 27. We're not talking about a 34 year old that, that has struggled with. He is. Okay. Let's do one more question. Cause I think this is a good one. GI wants to know, are you satisfied with the status of the bullpen as of today? Again, I'll run through those names that the Dodgers kind of have in their, in their, um, this is just looking at the 40 man. You got JP fire Eisen. Um, I mean, I guess Matt gauge, I'm not really going to count him. Gratterall. Uh, you've got Grove, you've got Kelly, you've got Evan Phillips, you've got Blake Trinan, you've got Venasco, you've got Varlin, you've got Vessia, and you've got Yarbrough. Those 10 guys are on the 40-man roster who I think we could see potentially as relief pitchers at some point. Are you satisfied? And Brazier, excuse me, and Brazier, so 11. Are you satisfied with that group? Loving it. Okay. Like this, I loved it. I loved it before this. I liked it, you know, love it even more. Like this is, they're, man, they're spending they're yeah, spending yeah. to get that locked in with we don't even know what Blake Trinan is going to look like. Yeah, that because was what I was going to say. Yeah, we don't even know what JP JP Fire Eyes and when he's on, he's got some of the best stuff in ball. Yeah, it's, um, it's just they've got they've got and Huddy like yeah. Minor the collection that they've got going right here. Like a lot yeah. of it has, you know, health willing, like if they're able to get some guys, get them on a rebound and rehabs go okay we don't know and where's you know dustin may eventually in the mix we don't know yeah. where he's going to transition into so yes i loved it yesterday i love it even more today uh 10 out of 10 like they're yeah i think in. it's I, my, the fear i think is what you were just hinting at which is the number of um bets that are being placed on high variability guys 
you know, because I think we were sitting, I was sitting here with a month and a half left in last year and be like, look, you know, Dustin May and Walker Bueller and Blake Trinan and like all Daniel Hudson, just like, well, as long as one or two of these guys kind of figures it out or get healthy and none of them did and it and it all went up in flames. So I think that's the the fear is that we're banking on a Blake Trinan or a JP Fire Eisen or Dustin May coming back or Daniel Hudson figuring it out. Because if you go 0 for 4 in that category of people, then I think I've got a lot more questions and concerns about this bullpen. If it's Evan Phillips and Joe Kelly, the the roller coaster of Joe Kelly and Bruce Dargraderall, who doesn't strike anybody out. Like, I think there's a world where I'm concerned two months in and there's a world where Trinan and Fire Eisen are back to like pre-injury levels. And you're like, holy crap, the Dodgers, the back of their bullpen is like four or five dudes that are upper echelon relief pitchers. I, I think the variability on this group is wide and I'm not even talking about our guy Blake's just like never trust a reliever. I'm just talking about I was guys just going to say, back. I'm just talking about guys coming back off injuries. Like I'm not even yeah. baking in like, well, Gratterall might decide to suck or something. I'm just saying like you have genuine health concern question marks that we'll see how they play out. But to answer the question, I'm good with the bullpen. Like you said, I was good with the bullpen before today's moves. Um, I'm fine with the bullpen after, you know, I think they got better today. Like, I don't think it's dramatically better because I'm higher on Ferguson, but um, you know, I think, I think they got better. There's not, it's not without risk again, Brazier's, you know, what 34, 35 years old got DFA would halfway through last year. So you're, you're betting on a 34 inning sample size, which I don't hate doing. Um, but I think it's uh, a massive sample. Yeah. Man, come on, man. A massive sample. Don't I do mean, this. Don't, don't do this. Caleb, <laughs> Caleb, 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 Caleb was, didn't mean that much to you. Come on, man. Ryan Brazier, Ryan Brazier was a guy like he, he had this is halfway through last year. I like him. I'm just saying like, <laughs> you know, the, the larger sample size of his career is, is different. Tells a different story than the smaller sample size, but I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the Dodgers and prior. It's why I like this deal. Cause I'm willing to say the Dodgers figured something out and, for you sure. know that, that he's going to have it going forward so with there him. you go but hey everybody thanks for joining us here hopping on a monday live show with scott and myself over 500 people amazing amazing stuff um we appreciate you thanks for everyone on youtube thanks to everyone on twitter um those listening on podcast apple spotify google the dodger heads podcast after the fact we greatly appreciate you make sure you check out dodgerblue.com i know we're gonna have stuff up on all of the moves made today tons of great nuggets of information in there so make sure you're checking out Dodger Blue dot com as well that is scott i am jeff enjoy the rest of your day folks as always go dodgers <laughs>